So when people say the stock market is crashing or, or hey, the stocks are going through the roof today, they're usually referring back to an index. And this is something like the S&P 500 or the Dow Jones or the NASDAQ. And maybe you've heard of those. But there's another popular index that I want to talk about in today's video, and that is the Russell 2000. So I had no idea what this was until I started to pay a little bit more attention to financial markets and investing. And so I thought I'd do a video about what the Russell 2000 is, why you should know. You'll be a little smarter after this video, hopefully, and you can talk about it to all of your friends. Stay tuned. We'll go through everything. Let's do it right now together. <laughs> All right, welcome back. This is Joshua Talks Money. I built and sold my tech company, and now I focus on investing, sharing the lessons I've learned with you every week. Hit that subscribe button, like this video if you find it helpful. Love to have you join with me. And speaking of lessons, let me talk about what I've learned about the Russell 2000. So this was an index I really didn't know much about or even kind of pay attention to. But now that I've learned about it, I see it everywhere. And so if you watch CNBC or if you use a finance app like Yahoo Finance like I do, you'll see the three common most popular indexes that I just mentioned in the intro. But you'll see the Russell 2000 up there too because it's probably the fourth most popular metric people use to measure the market and here's why the Russell 2000 is tracking 2,000 smaller companies these are often referred to as small cap companies small market capitalization companies and that means they're much uh, much smaller than you know some of the big tech names you may hear about to put this in perspective the Russell 2000 median market cap for companies is about one billion dollars Apple, on the other hand, is $2.4 trillion. That is 2,400 times bigger than the median Russell 2000 company. And so it's really important because those smaller companies play a factor in how we measure the economy and how uh, you have opportunities to invest in other areas. But what's up with the name Russell 2000? Well, Russell is actually from Frank Russell, who is the founder of this Frank Russell investment company and they, the financial services provider established back in 1936. And they created this index. They started to track this and it became wildly popular. And now it's one of the major staples of tracking the markets. That company was a acquired actually back in 1998, 99 by Northwestern Mutual. And uh, it's still something that's made an impact on markets as of this day. So how does a company actually end up in the Russell 2000 index? Well, again, it goes back to the size and that market capitalization, but there's also a process every year called reconstitution, where the index then looks at these companies and evaluates what will come in and what will be removed. And so over time, every year, that actual makeup, the basket of companies that represents the index is always changing. Things are added and things drop off. And I started to think about, well, you know, what companies are actually in the Russell 2000 that I've heard of. It's actually pretty fascinating to see how many companies are out there publicly traded that you never heard of and maybe never will uh, know much about. But there are some that you have heard of. I think some popular names that stood out to me is like Avis, the, the rental car company. Uh, I think Crocs, like the shoes, the rubber shoe things are is in there. I think Macy's, um, Digital Ocean, if you've heard of them, if you, you know the technology space. And there are many others. A few others that come to mind are Asana. This is like a project management type software platform that I have used in my career. And it's really interesting. You can dive deep and look at these companies. There's a lot of companies in the financial sector and tech and healthcare. So it's a broad range of industries that you get exposure to with these 2000 companies. Okay, so how could you invest in the Russell 2000? Well, there's actually mutual funds or ETFs where you could do this. One of the most popular ones is the iShares Russell 2000 ETF. This is ticker symbol IWM. And you know that I'm a huge fan of Vanguard ETFs and mutual funds. You can invest in their version of this, the Russell 2000 ETF, which is ticker symbol VTWO. Okay, so let's actually dive a little deeper onto that as an investment, which is VTWO. If you were to go buy this exchange traded fund from Vanguard, you'd be paying an expense ratio of 0.1%. I always like to talk about the risk for these. I found it pretty interesting that this ETF is actually the highest risk that Vanguard puts on their kind of uh, range of possible risky investments as a five, meaning there's a lot of volatility. And that's primarily because these companies are much smaller and there's a lot more risk. 
Uh, they're maybe not as profitable or established in their industries. And there's a lot of things that change, a lot of moving parts. But ideally, it is a great way that you could have exposure to all these companies as some of them may eventually become these big uh, giant corporations that have proven themselves in the market and provide a lot of value. And yeah, just looking at it right now, the top holdings of VTWO, you can see that Shockwave Medical, never heard of them. Biohaven Pharmaceutical, never heard of them. Uh, if I scroll down a little bit, you can see uh, the one I have heard of, Texas Roadhouse, I'm getting a little hungry. Uh, and, and probably Murphy USA, you know, kind of a oil and gas company. And so you can see there, there, those are some of the bigger, bigger names perhaps, but there's a lot of different things that make up uh, the Russell 2000. All right, so let's look at the performance of the Russell 2000 and we'll use this VTWO ETF as the measure of that. So we'll start first year to date as I'm filming this video, it was down 17% and, and that's to be expected because the whole market's really down. Um, you know, over the past year, down 17%, three year, 8.67%, five years, it's up 7%, 10 years, 10%. And since inception for this fund, uh, about 12 years ago, it's about 10%, which is pretty good. All right, so why would you actually want to invest in the Russell 2000? Well, I think it's kind of going back to some of the points I made earlier, which is you'd want access to investing opportunities in these broad, you know, broad range of industries with a lot of smaller companies ideally capitalizing as they grow and innovate and become larger and more dominant companies in their respective areas. Another thought is while it's more volatile because they're smaller, they have higher upside potential. And I think when you know markets really sold off earlier uh, in 2022, these smaller cap stocks were getting hit pretty hard. And that meant that you know as, as things may rebound over time here to be determined, uh, some of those companies theoretically should have a far more upside because they had went down in value so much. And you know as a long-term investor, that might be something that you consider. But do I personally own any kind of Russell 2000 ETF in my portfolio? And the answer would be, I do not. Uh, you know, there's like this balanced portfolio mi composition or mixture you can find between, you know, big tech names or big large cap uh, stocks, small cap stocks, international and, and so forth. Um, I don't actually do that. I own a lot of VTI, which is the total US stock market. I've done videos about VTI. And what that actually does for me is it gives me access to these companies in the Russell, uh, but also the big companies like Apple, all in one fund, all in one ETF. So I'm getting exposure to everything in the market uh, without actually having concentration in, in one place necessarily, at least uh, from that perspective. All right, so what's the big takeaway here? Well, when you think about the Russell 2000 or when you see it in the news or on TV, I want you to think about smaller companies. I want you to think about public companies that are you know, worth about a, a few hundred million, uh, the median about a billion, and then up you know, into the 20 billion range. But these are the smaller companies in the market, and that is how we measure performance of that sector. Does that make sense? Now, if you're wanting to invest in something that's actually kind of the opposite, some of these bigger names, big tech names, then that's where you should watch my video about the QQQ ETF. This is one of my favorite investments, and actually, it is where I've put almost exclusively all of my money as I've invested every single week right into this fund. So if you want to learn more about that, click this video and you can see that there. Thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. We'll be back here every week, getting things back on track, putting out content like this for you. All right, we'll see you then.